Hello, my name is Matthew Hoffman. I am the designer and founder of Living Vehicle. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about trucks. So trucks are one of the necessary features of a living vehicle because LV is fundamentally a towable product, meaning it's a trailer. There is no engine inside living vehicle. Uh, you do need something to pull it. Uh, so in the world of trucks, I'll talk about what the specific truck you need, what makes a great truck for towing LV and all the many features and different components that go into a truck and what you can do to make a normal truck look more like something like this. Uh, so Living Vehicle is a very special product. It's not like any other trailer out there. In fact, uh, when I started designing LV, that was intentional. We designed it to specifically for full-time living, designed to last for generations, and kind of take whatever you can throw at it. Of course, it's designed specifically to get off-grid, so LV is fundamentally a electric powered travel trailer. Of course, there are backup systems like gas and you have propane that allows you uh, propane generation on the uh, backup power generator. But as an electric powered product, it takes up a lot of energy. Solar panels on the top, big battery bank down in the belly. Of course, all that stuff weighs, uh, it, it adds weight. And one of the design kind of fundamentals of living vehicle is that we design it to be quality. So we leverage a lot of marine technology. We kind of have a military mindset where we want to design it first where uh, two is one and one is none. So redundancy is always a factor and we design it with the most quality in mind. So because of that, living vehicle is a heavy product and it is designed in a way that it will last a very long time. So not any truck will tow it. You definitely cannot tow living vehicle with an SUV. So the first thing I'm going to do is tell you about what types of trucks and then all those little details and we'll go into that later. So every single year we build another truck which we call the LVT, the living vehicle truck and this is just an example of what you can do. There's so many different options and brands and all these features and this video is going to help to try and clarify some of that. So last year we did a Ram, this year we're doing a Ford and there's a lot of other brands out there you know both gas and electric which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so what I'm standing here in front of is a F-350 and this is our living vehicle truck for 2022 and uh, many different different features that go into this to make it a great tow vehicle. Now, living vehicle in and of itself, it ranges in weight. And depending on what you're towing, you're going to have to make sure you match up the truck with the trailer so that you have a capable truck to tow the trailer that's pulling behind you. So living vehicle ranges from around 14,000 pounds to 18,000 pounds max GVWR. That means gross vehicle weight rating. That's literally how much weight that unit weighs in and of itself. So a truck has something called a towing capacity. Now towing capacity basically means what's the GVWR of the trailer and the towing capacity of the truck sets the limit that that truck can handle. So you're going to need a full-size truck to tow living vehicle but not any full-size truck will do. There's two primary classes of full-size truck. There's an entry level what would be called a half ton or an LT truck and examples of that are the 150 class or 1500. So this could be a F-150 whether it's a Ford uh, gas powered version or a Lightning that's also the F-150. Um, then you have other brands like the GMC Sierra uh, 1500. You have the Ford uh, sorry the Dodge Ram uh, 1500. Those are all examples of half ton trucks and those tend to range the maximum towing capacity on a 1500 or 150 truck will be right around 10 to 12 thousand pounds. Now it's a great truck but living vehicle is designed to be a full size HD. So there's another class above LT, the 1500 or the 150, that puts it in another category. And HD literally means heavy duty. So that, when you transcend the 150 half ton class, you get into what's called the HD series. So HD, all the major brands make HD trucks. That includes GMC, Dodge, Chevy, Ford, they all have an HD lineup. Now this starts at what's called a three quarter ton truck. And three quarter ton is kind of a nice blend between what would be a half ton and a one ton. It's kind of right in the middle there. And this is your Ford 250, Ram 2500, and then the other brands very similar. Now those 2500 trucks I find they have a lot of great towing capacity. It's not uncommon to find a 2500 where your towing capacity goes well above 20,000 pounds but the thing you got to watch out for when it comes to towing when it comes to uh, your 2500 or three quarter ton trucks is the payload. Now payload is literally how much your truck can carry vertically. So payload is very important because when you're towing a trailer, walk back here with me, Anything that you put inside the vehicle, inside the truck, 
comes off of the payload. So every truck, just like there's a towing capacity rating, there's also going to be a payload rating. And now payload isn't just what you put in the bed. Payload also factors in the occupants. So say you've got four people traveling there, that comes off the payload number, cargo in the bed, but also you've got your hitch back here. So that hitch holds this ball and receiver. And when you put the receiver on top of that ball, the coupler, you are going to have additional weight going onto that payload number. So say your payload on a 2500 tends to be between two and 3,000 pounds. It's very uncommon to have a 2500 or a three quarter ton truck above 3,000 pound payload. So think about it this way. Say we've got the high end living vehicle max out at 18,000 pounds, that's a pro. So you've got it completely fully loaded, which every LV has a lot of carrying capacity. So you're gonna have to carry a lot of stuff to get that number, but say you do. Um, the amount that goes on the tongue or the A-frame, so that coupler where the, the trailer attaches physically to that ball back there, that weight tends to be 10% of the overall trailer weight. So say you have an 18,000 pound trailer, your weight, which is called hitch weight, is going to be about 10% or 1,800 pounds on that ball. So when you factor in total payload, towing capacity number one, how much does the trailer weigh? Payload number two, very important, that includes occupants, gear you put in the bed, and then the hitch weight from the trailer itself, typically 10%. So if we factor these numbers, say you've got four occupants, about 500 pounds in there, nice full family, and then you've got maybe another 500 pounds of gear in your bed, and you've got 1,800 pounds on your receiver there. So that is going to all add up to about 3,600 pounds, about 35, 36, somewhere between three and 4,000 pounds. Now, the issue there is that if you've got a higher end LV, you're gonna need to make sure that you get a full size truck, and that is a one ton truck. So above the 2,500 or the three quarter ton truck is the one ton full size F350, your Ram 3500. And this is a perfect example of a full size truck. So come over here and take a look and you know this because of the designation F350. Now we took most of the badging off this truck, but we did leave this here. So you can tell that is a 350. This is a one ton truck and this truck tows well above 20,000 pounds and the payload is just below 4,000 pounds. So this is our perfect kind of configured tow vehicle for the 2022 living vehicle lineup. And uh, we will talk about what makes, what we did to this thing, cause it's, it's not a standard truck. And uh, there's a lot of reasons why we made it look the way we did and uh, keep following along. The main thing that you're gonna pick first is bed size. So trucks come in a varying lengths of beds and these are all options. So you can buy a F350 and you can have either a long bed or a short bed. Now this truck we have here, the bed, it, literally the bed of the truck where you put all the stuff, that bed is either long or short. Now what we have here, this is a short bed. I think it's around a six and a half foot bed. The other option is a eight foot bed. Now all that's gonna do, everything's gonna look exactly the same from this line forward, but the bed will extend another foot and a half back. Now what does that do? You say, okay, great, I love bigger is better. Uh, I want an eight foot bed. Um, there's pros and cons to this. Uh, it all depends what you're optimizing for, as with all things. Uh, just like every boat's a compromise, every truck is a compromise. So if you're going to go with a long bed because you value a lot of storage capacity and you can either get a camper shell cover or you can get another tonneau cover on top there, we'll talk about that more later, but you can carry a lot of gear with an eight foot bed. It basically becomes your rolling garage. You can take it with you, you go wherever you go and you have all your gear in there. It's great for folks that love to take a lot of things with you. Maybe you've got a lot of, you're passionate about sports and you have a lot of gear when it comes to you know skiing or snowboarding or off-road adventures stuff like that biking um, so that as your garage eight foot beds are great now the thing about a long bed though is that it can become a little unwieldy the longer the truck the more challenging it is to drive in short kind of confined areas navigating parking lots stuff like that not impossible of course but something to be aware of um, the other thing to notice is that when you select your bed configuration You'll notice on the back tire, sometimes you have what's called a dual rear wheel. Now, dual rear wheel is when you have two wheels on each side of the truck, and that's what's called a dually. Dually, two, wheel, two rear wheel, also expressed in DRW when you're looking at truck configurations. Now, 
benefit to this is that it does add a whole bundle of payload capacity. So because you have those additional wheels, every different component has a rating, whether it's the tire, the wheel, the suspension, everything is rated for a certain amount of weight that it can carry. So add two wheels, add two tires, beef up that suspension, you have a lot more carrying capacity when it comes to your payload. Now there's pros and cons to that of course, double rear wheel or DRW can really add some stiffness in the suspension, can make it a little bit of a, a challenge to drive and that's when you really want to start modifying the suspension which we did here. But this is a single rear wheel truck and it has plenty capacity when it comes to payload for towing a living vehicle. Your next big consideration when selecting a truck is cab size. Now, cab is literally the place you sit when you drive the truck, the place that everyone gets to hang out when you're rolling down the highway. Cab literally means from about this section here back to here, everything behind those two doors. Now, different kinds of cabs. What we see here, this is called a crew cab. This is the biggest cab. Actually, there are bigger cabs than this, but in the Ford lineup, which is this truck, you're not going to find a bigger cab than this. Now, Crew cab's great. I love crew cab because it's basically an SUV. You know, take a look at this. Look at the rear seats here. The amount of space inside this vehicle is significant. I mean, you've got a good foot, foot and a half of space back there. So if you have a lot of carrying requirements, maybe you've got a family, you've got dogs and you know, all sorts of other critters that like to roll with you as you're traveling, um, a crew cab's great. Now, the next size down from a crew cab is what's called a double cab. There's other terms for it, but it's kind of in the middle where the back seats on a truck or what you would more traditionally think when you think truck. It's like, oh, I don't really want to drive a truck because it's cramped in the back. That's, that's typical for a, a double cab. Now, there's also the single cab, which is everything from this line backwards is gone and all that bed just comes forward. So your wheelbase, meaning the distance from wheel to wheel, front to back, shrinks down quite a bit, gets a lot more maneuverable in tight spaces, but you don't have any of this great interior storage. So the truck that we typically pick out for a living vehicle towing product is a crew cab short bed. I find that's the perfect balance between lots of ample indoor space, everything you get with an SUV, it's not too long, but it's really nice and robust. It has a high carrying capacity, uh, so the payload's really high. And also, the uh, towing capacity, it all depends on what you get. So 350 in this configuration is the truck that I recommend getting for towing an LV. Now, all those great brands that I just mentioned, Ford, Ram, Chevy, GMC, those are your industry players that have been around for decades and decades. You know, those are all well established. You understand what those are, most all of them are gas and diesel powered. Now, as we all know, there's a movement towards electricity. Electrification of the uh, vehicle industry is among us, and we are well uh, involved with that transition. Um, at Living Vehicle, it's no secret. We're an electric travel trailer company, and we are marching forward uh, with a, a, a fervor towards this electric future. Now, the electric truck industry is on the verge of a lot of great things, but it's just starting. Um, Y'all may be familiar with some of the main brands out there, the names that have started to pop up, like Rivian or Tesla Cybertruck. There's some other smaller names like Atlas or Lordstown, all these. A lot of these haven't come to market yet and they're all just concepts. Of course, there's one truck company that is not a concept, that is Rivian. Uh, we had a Rivian here the other day and it's a great truck. Now, Rivian is even smaller than the F-150. This is a light duty truck. This is more akin to a Toyota Tacoma or an F-150. Now, it can tow more than a, a Tacoma, by the way. Uh, of course, it is got all that great torque, um, but it is not a full-size truck. It's not a HD truck at all. Uh, it's, a, it's quite small. It's a petite little guy. Um, the Cybertruck, no one knows when that's going to come out. But you know, they say on their website it's going to tow 14,000 pounds. That's for a three motor. We're all hopeful that it goes up and it goes up to 20,000 pounds with a quad motor. We'll see what happens there. Um, take a look at Atlas, A-T-L-I-S. That's a great truck company that is right now really the, the only HD capacity truck company out there that is, that is building a, uh, that has plans to develop a heavy duty series of work truck or commercial truck. Uh, Chevy Silverado though, there's another one that just came out with the, uh, the Silverado electrified version. That one goes up well above 20,000 pounds towing capacity and um, I see that out now. In fact, I was down at a game in LA the other day and I saw a Chevy Silverado on display that had a very high towing capacity. So we're all looking forward to the future and as that comes down, we're going to match that up and have LV is 
play really nicely with the truck to where the power from the truck can play to power the LV and then the power from the LV can push back power to the truck and vice versa. So there's a lot of great future ahead when it comes to electric trucks. We're just not there yet. So we're gonna focus on gas and diesel vehicles. Next thing to look for when you're evaluating tow vehicles and looking at all those big beautiful trucks is you wanna consider whether or not you're going to go gas or diesel. Now there's benefits to both. Gas, readily available. Every single gas station has it. Diesel, it is just a different product. Um, fundamentally, diesel, uh, the engines on diesel are just more powerful. Uh, there's more torque, um, you know, and every major brand offers it, you know, the four major uh, truck brands for HD trucks. Um, gas does have its limits. So gas engines tend to be a little bit lighter duty. Um, you know, you'll find those mostly prevalent on the half ton trucks, your uh, F-150s, um, Ram, 1500s, uh, there's a limit to what a gas engine can do. Um, there's some other benefits to uh, a diesel engine. You've got a lot of torque. Um, so when you're towing a trailer, uh, the more torque or the pulling raw pulling power off the gate uh, will give you a lot of benefits to a diesel engine. Now, diesel is also tremendous because it's also more fuel efficient. All right, now that you've got your bed configuration, cab, all the different components, towing capacity, payload, you've selected your truck. There's one more thing to configure, and that is the engine. Now, engines typically come in two different variants. That is a diesel and gas. Now, gas is a little more light duty, typically found on your 150 and 1500 half-ton trucks. Um, diesel becomes a great option when you go up to the three-quarter ton and one-ton trucks. Your 350, this truck does have a diesel engine, and this is, by the way, the, uh, it's called the Power Stroke. Now, if I could find the latch here. Power Stroke is a tremendous, probably industry leading diesel engine. Uh, another one that I love is a Cummins. It's found on Ram. Um, frankly, they're all making great trucks, but one of the benefits to a diesel engine is that you just generally get a lot more towing capacity. It's more powerful. Uh, you do have more torque and in the end you get more pulling power. So diesel is the way we recommend. With diesel, you tend to get a lot more of the payload towing capacity. All those numbers just go up. Now that you've got your full-size one-ton truck selected, something you're gonna to wanna to know about is the bigger the truck gets, the more it's designed to carry. So big commercial trucks designed to carry a lot of weight in the bed. Now, because of that, the rear suspension on a stock truck tends to get very stiff because designed to carry a lot of weight. So because this truck is gonna be your daily driver, if you're gonna have a living vehicle, you wanna make sure that you're picking out a truck that will be accommodating, so you're not getting jarred around when you're driving down the road. Now, that's one of the reasons that we put so much time and effort into selecting great suspension systems. This is an aftermarket installation. So this truck has been lifted about five inches from stock configuration, but with the lift, we put on a very high-end suspension system, and that's by Carly Suspension Systems. This is a called a pin top system with lots of different components. I highly recommend you go on their site, take a look at it. I'll point out just a few. So you got a lift on here. This truck does come with airbags. Now, airbags is something that I highly recommend. You can get them from the factory. You can also get it aftermarket, and you can install them. What airbags does is it allows you to adjust the amount of pressure you have on that suspension. So if you load your truck up, you can push that airbag, fill it all the way up, and you can have a really nice ride quality when you're towing. Now, when you take the living vehicle off your hitch there, and you're just driving your truck around town, take the air all the way out of that suspension system. It's gonna give you a really nice plush ride when you're driving around. Now, you got a lot of different components here. There's some, all the way down there, you'll see that is a full progressive rear leaf spring system. Um, that's for the rear here. And that is needed for a little bit more ride compliance, small bump, bump compliance when you're going down the road. Coming up to the front here, this does have the coil springs to either side. You also have some upgraded king shocks inside there. Again, really nice high-end system. Carly even makes a dynamic system now where it senses the road in front of you to make and it adjusts it as you're going down. Um, I really do like the lift. It gives you a little bit more capacity. And you've got this really nice step that comes down so that you can just step up into it. So the lift really doesn't cause any issue just for your daily use. 
on a stock truck, you'll find, you know, whether you get a dual rear wheel, single rear wheel, front's always going to be one. Um, but your wheels tend to be a little bit boring, in my opinion. Um, they're also not designed for off-road use. They tend to be more commercial-focused, driving on the freeway. Of course, you can get some up upgraded packages direct from the manufacturer. Now, they're really doing a good job with their HD trucks in upping the kind of custom customizability or the uh, off-road capability of the trucks. Also, the interiors are really high-end now. You don't just get these big, heavy-duty work trucks with a bare-bones interior and a big engine. Um, it's a really nice, well-rounded truck. But when you're upgrading suspension, I almost always recommend putting bigger tires on there. Um, not only does it look great, but it functions great too. Now, the tire that I like to select is a blend. So there's two different levels or theories of off-road tire. You have the kind of on-road winter tire, uh, which is just an all-season tire. That's not this. Uh, the next level up is the all-terrain tire. Now, all-terrain is kind of your entry-level off-road tire. It's great for just what it says in the name, all-terrain. Now there is a limit to that though. Um, while uh, all-terrain will you know, go great in mud and snow, um, well, maybe not mud, but uh, in snow, there is a limit to how far you can go. Now, uh, the next level up is what's called mud terrain. That mud terrain is what you find on like a Jeep Wrangler um, off-road vehicle designed specifically for going off-road, rock crawling, maximum traction. Now, there's a downside to that MT or mud terrain tire. Uh, the, the bigger, and more aggressive the tread pattern gets on a tire, the tire tread tends to wear rather quickly. Uh, the other thing about MT or mud terrain tires is that when you're driving down the freeway, that tire can be very noisy. Have you ever driven next to a truck and then you heard that buzz sounding? You, know, can, you can only imagine what it's like for the gentleman or gal inside the truck. Uh, that it, that's noisy. So what we have here is a it's actually a mixed tire It's it sits right between the mud terrain and the all terrain and this is one of my favorite tires This is a domestic produced tire. It's called a Nitto N-I-T-T-O Ridge Grappler and it's got a really nice aggressive sidewall um, This is a 37 inch tire and this is about as big as you're going to want to put on with this configuration. Uh, this is a 13 and a half inch width. We push it out just a little bit depending on the offset of the wheel. Um, so you can get different offsets. But when you are putting this together, I um, highly recommend going with a kind of a bona fide truck shop that knows exactly what they're doing and they can make these recommendations for you. Um, now when it comes to the wheels, you want to make sure that your, not only your tires, but your wheels too have the capacity to carry all the weight that you're going to be towing. So whenever you select a wheel and tire package, make sure that you maintain the capacity or the recommended vehicle capacity for the manufacturer because if you put on something that doesn't carry what it needs to, doesn't matter what the, the engine can tow, doesn't matter what the bed or the sticker on the trailer or on the truck says, you're not going to be able to tow or you're not going to be able to carry what you need to because you're only as strong as your weakest link. And after all, it doesn't matter how cool your truck is, there's one point of contact, actually four points of contact, in the entire vehicle with the ground and that's right at the bottom of the tire. So do not waste and do not skimp on tires. Tires are extremely important. Now this specific formulation is made from Kevlar. So this is a spray-on Kevlar body armor and there's the main reason we do this is it's it's not bulletproof, but it is scratch proof. It's ding proof. It's uh, you, you don't really have to worry about maintaining it. it and the, there's a reason not only do we paint it or we have this embedded color. So the spray is embedded with this color and there's two different two tone color here. So we spray black on the bottom. It gives it a really nice grounding element and the gray is color coded to match the living vehicle itself. So the reason we spray this is great protectant. You don't have to worry. Oh, dust. If you get dust on this, it doesn't look any different. It just looks like a nice clean vehicle. Um, and uh, not only does it, does it work really great from a functional perspective, uh, it will blend perfectly as the LVT. This is kind of the two-tone color that we're always going to recommend, and that's what makes it look like the whole package. For day-to-day -day life, I always like carrying water with me. So being prepared is second to none, and uh, one way to do it is just put a bunch of water bottles in your bed, but I love a more integrated solution. So this truck has an integrated water storage tank that hooks up to a water pump on the truck. There's some auxiliary switches. You can turn on that water pump and you have a shower here located at the very back of the truck. So this is literally a shower which comes out and you can shower. It's got about 35, 40 gallons of water inside there. And this water tank is located at the bottom of the truck. It's out of sight. It's not gonna take up any space in your bed. So 
One of the great features is that water tank. Now, talk about tanks. There's one other feature that does come included on this custom LV truck, and that is a air tank. So if you are out in the sticks and you need air in your living vehicle tires, you need to fill up, or maybe you've got bike tires, or you need to fill up the very tires in your tow vehicle itself, check it out. This is a airline. So we do have an air tank also located down underneath the bed. We installed that, and that also powers the air suspension system. So you can put in a air compressor hose, you can fill up, inflatables you can do work on a job site i mean whatever you need that airline is extremely useful and all of this is configured and included in the aftermarket upgrades of the lv truck so i'm going to show you a little bit more about the bed configuration that we have on this living vehicle truck um, short bed so you've got about six and a half feet of storage there now when you pull down this is one of the great features of modern trucks that tailgate has a slow release um, in the tailgate for the, the the Ford, you have this nice step here. Um, by the way, you also have a little railing here. So this becomes your railing, this becomes your step. You can walk up onto now when you access the bed. Now we have a what's called a tonneau cover, and that is literally a metal cover here protecting, and that's waterproof, so water comes down and it goes over both sides and rails. So you're gonna protect anything that's in your bed. So if you do not have a tonneau cover, there's other options, of course. You can have a camper shell. Uh, that it goes up above, it's about this high. So it continues the level of the roof. You have some that raise up, but that becomes your garage. Now, I really like this. I like the look of a classic truck where it comes down here. You can also have these integrated rails. By the way, this is a Retrax Powertrax Pro, I, be, I believe, and it has integrated rails to the side. So if you want to put stuff like a rooftop tent, you want to put rails so you can have uh, ladders or surfboards or anything stored on the top there, um, you can have a platform up there. You, it's a lot of great gear storage. Now, what I love about tonneau covers is that they can be automated. This, by the way, is a rolling tonneau cover. Typically, you would just push this forward. It would roll up to the front in a storage compartment, but this one has a little key fob, and you push a button. That just opens up. Now, the great thing, this is waterproof, so when you have water down here, it will come over and protect everything down here. This opens up the entire side of the bed. You have a nice little light there that is also remote controlled. And I typically keep this little key fob either on your keychain or right back here, so you're always going to use it. Um, now, one of the great features, in addition to that, let's close this guy, close this guy, is a bed slide. So, cargo bed slide, really great feature because if you've got a bunch of gear in there and all the way back there, difficult to reach. Unless you've got this, of course, you can take out the railing, you can drop this little step, climb up there and walk over all your stuff to access that. Now, this is a 1,500 pound bed slide. It's that easy. So you can put 1,500 pounds of gear in here and you can easily access from all three sides all your gear. Now, this might get a little bit close when it comes to the tonneau cover. This does come up about five inches on the base, so that does take up space. So this, I find, might be even better with a camper shell because you have a ton of space in there. You pull it out, all your stuff is just readily available, easy to reach, really great solution. So one more tank that is not visible. Well, I guess all the tanks aren't visible. You just do see these ports. You have the airport, you have the water port, the fuel tank. So in all trucks, you carry fuel with you. Now, the fuel tank's located underneath the truck. Uh, there is a stock fuel tank, of course, in every truck, uh, whether it's gas or diesel. Um, those fuel tanks tend to run about 20 to 30 gallons. Now, I find that that's simply just not enough, especially when you're towing a large vehicle. Uh, your fuel will go down. I find that we average about 10 miles a gallon on this truck when towing. Um, so, 30 gallon fuel tank, you're going to get about 300 miles. So, uh, what I do is I love to upgrade that fuel tank. Uh, so, right next to that water tank, we have a expanded fuel tank. It kind of looks like an amorphic blob fitting into all the components and parts down underneath the tank, but it carries 55 gallons of fuel. It is a Titan fuel tank. 55 gallons, it'll get you about 600 miles. Plus, if you're not towing, you know, I've gone 700 miles on a single tank of diesel with this 55 gallon tank. Now you'll notice the grill, the bumper, everything on the face of this truck looks like nothing you've ever seen. That's because it is custom. Now the grill is a custom grill. Typically you have that big 
oval there, that ellipse, that is the Ford logo. We pulled that off. We also pulled all the other kind of extraneous features, little ornamental bits. I love this simple grill. It adds a lot of great airflow to your radiator, but also we put the living vehicle emblem right there just to let you know that it is a living vehicle truck. Now, right below the grill, you do have a custom bumper by Stealth Fighter. This is a, uh, a wonderful bumper in, in part because it gives you a little bit of additional clearance for the wheels. You can see that it has some additional cut right here so that when you turn the wheels in and out, uh, you're not gonna rub up against the bumper. Um, also, you do have some integrated features to this bumper as well. So uh, what you'll see, this is a rigid light bar uh, that is curved. It is integrated perfectly into that bumper. Um, really nice and strong. This is also sprayed in Kevlar to match. So you're gonna install all these features before you spray the vehicle. Uh, this does have tow hooks and these are integrated right into these tow hook tow hook ports right there. Of course, there is a uh, super winch right there, uh, massive capacity with the nylon rope. Uh, and then you just reach down there to activate it. So if you're stuck out there, you get your LV stuck, you get your truck stuck, um, you just need to pull someone off of a cliff. I don't know, a winch. Um, also remember to carry block and tackle with your winch when you are traveling uh, because you can help you get out of a bad situation. Now let's take a look back at the rear of the truck and there's a couple more features back there. Now, on my way to the back of the truck, I decided to take a little stop here and tell you about the fender flares. That's what we see here. This is additional. This was not stock on the truck. So that's this big fender right here. It comes out about four inches from the side. Now, because we put these additional width tires on the truck for greater off-road capacity capability, um, you do want to pull out those fenders a little bit so that when you're rolling down the road, not only does it visually look better because it fits the profile of the vehicle, but it's purpose-built and functional as well. When you have mud, you're going off the road in the mud, it'll prevent rocks and other debris from flying up in the air, hitting your truck or mudding up the side of your vehicle. Follow me back here. I'll show you the back of the truck with the custom installed bumper. Now, this is another same brand bumper in the front, Stealth Fighter. This is a steel bumper. We do have beautiful componentry all integrated into here. Um, so of course you have the two tow hooks back here. Um, and then you've got a lot of different parts built into this. Um, so again, we've got the typical connectors for your trailer, four pin, seven pin round connector, uh, the airport that we installed. There are two backup lights here that can be turned on and off with a auxiliary switch in the vehicle itself. Of course, below the bumper is your one connection point. This is the hitch receiver setup. The ball and coupler go onto here. This is your, this is a part, by the way, of a uh, weight distribution and equalizer system by, um, uh, not this one, but we, uh, we have another one called, uh, it's by Blue Ox, which is our standard. That's a 20,000 pound uh, weight distribution system. This is a hitch that we use just for around the yard here, moving trailers back and forth. Uh, this hitch doesn't have any integrated weight distribution or sway control, uh, but this is a, a 22,000 pound hitch, uh, which is a really nice black powder coated steel. And you do have these really nice, easy, you just pull these pins in and out and you can lift this up and down to accommodate the various heights of your living vehicle trailer. Now one of the best parts about custom upfitting a tow vehicle is that you have this integration with the living vehicle and that's why we put so much attention on the truck itself is because without a truck your LV is you know it's just gonna sit there so um, we really integrate both the truck and the tow vehicle and one of the things that we do is uh, while you're towing uh, you've got all this great power with your power stroke diesel engine. Now any of the four major brands of truck uh, Ford, Chevy, Ram, GMC uh, we're going to be able to install a secondary alternator, which is a high wattage alternator, which leverages the power of the diesel engine. By the way, you can only get one alternator factory installed because we do need to have space for that second alternator inside that engine compartment. And when we do, you can get the energy integration package with living vehicle. That is an option. And that installs this equipment right here. Now, what you see here, this port with this nice little plastic cover that we custom designed and then we uh, 3D printed this out. This, you pull this off and this is your high watt uh, output. Uh, so that leverages that alternator, sends current directly to the back of the LV energy system and it charges your batteries while towing. So you can run all your equipment like your air conditioner, keep your vehicle, your living vehicle uh, nice and cool back there or warm while you're towing uh, and leverage the power capacity of your truck. Now. We've got this beautiful little cover there, keeps that closed. Uh, this is a signal port, so you connect your voltage wire and then your signal wire, which allows you to, it tells you when you're in idle and 
when you need more power and it basically is the communication wire between the truck and the tow vehicle. Now one other component of, the, uh, of this back bumper and you'll see right there is that little pin connector. That is the video feed. So part of the living vehicle, we do have four cameras on all four sides of the LV, and those are giving you real-time live video feed of what's happening on all sides of the living vehicle. So when you're driving, you connect this port from your hitch. There's what we call the power tower on the living vehicle hitch, the A-frame, and that goes the feed right into there, and it goes to a LCD screen inside the cab. So while we're back here, I'm gonna talk about one very important feature, and that's this tiny little sticker right here. Now this sticker is, is communicating vital information and not every brand will have the sticker placed right there and not every brand will have that sticker. Now that doesn't mean that it won't have these features. Every manufacturer will tell you what this sticker says in one way or another. Now Ford gives you this nice little convenient sticker location so you understand whenever you're towing a vehicle you know what this does. This tells you how much you can tow and now what this this tells you the rating of your hitch setup. So this hitch setup from this receiver to the hitch itself and the connection to the bumper, this has a limit on how much you can tow. Now it says right here, max gross trailer weight in pounds with a weight distributing hitch or a weight carrying hitch, by the way, these are the same values, is 21,200 pounds. So that's the maximum weight that your trailer can weigh that this truck is allowed to carry. Now there's one other number here, max tongue weight. Now if you'll notice, max tongue weight, 2120, 10% of the max trailer weight. Now earlier in this video I was talking about towing capacity and how much a trailer weighs and how much this, the weight is on the hitch. That's typically 10%. So they do the same thing here. So the max tongue weight, meaning tongue, is the tongue of the trailer. The max weight that can go down on that ball is 2,120 pounds with a max gross trailer weight of 21,200 pounds. This is the perfect truck to tow the top of the line living vehicle. All right, welcome to the inside of a very beautiful F-350. There's all sorts of different trim levels on trucks. This is on the upper end. We didn't go with the limited because with the limited F-350, it required two alternators, factory installed, and with two alternators, we cannot install a second alternator ourselves. So you do not get the energy integration uh, package if you have a limited trim. All right, so one other feature that I'm gonna point out inside the interior of this truck are these little modules that I've installed on this pillar, this corner pillar. Uh, this is a uh, what's called a throttle um a throttle monitor or a throttle booster. Um, there's all sorts of different names and you know types for it, but this is a controller which gives you more uh, throttle kind of boost as you're pushing down that throttle initially. Now the reason that we do that, this is this is a tuner uh, that in, increases that throttle response time. Now on a diesel vehicle specifically, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, kind of complaints on a feature called throttle lag is that when you push down that, that accelerator pedal, you're gonna have a little bit of a lag time before the truck starts to move forward. So what this does is it gives you uh, a, a simple kind of computer guided control and you can turn it up or down, which gives you a much faster throttle response. So when you push down that pedal, you get a much faster response. All right, well, there you have it. That's the end of a very long day, beautiful day here in Santa Barbara, sun's going down. And uh, I just love talking trucks. Thank you for following along, and I hope you learned a thing or two. If you want to know more about some of the stuff that I talked about or what we can do to help you get into a perfect truck for your living vehicle, please do reach out. And uh, you know where to find us. Take a look at us on www.livingvehicle.com. Of course, social, all those things. We're active, and we would love to chat with you. Uh, my name is Matthew Hoffman, and uh, this has been Living Vehicle, uh, the Living Vehicle Truck.